finest I have ever seen on a presidential visit, and I have been on quite a few of them. Perhaps, of course, that is surrounding the terrorist siege that has taken place in the last two weeks. President Reagan should be speaking okay, again in uh, perhaps just a little bit. Right now, we'll throw it back to you, Ron, until the president speaks up. Thank you, Marlene. Yes, it is our understanding that this is a, uh, a scheduled break, if you will. In fact, according to the original program, there was to be about uh, 10 minutes between the time the president actually came uh, on stage and the time he was introduced. I presume that was for these uh, dances. In fact, it's uh, appropriate that we've, uh, we've seen a polka and heard some polka music because during the speech, if President Reagan sticks to his prepared remarks, he is going to align himself with the Chicago congressman, Dan Rostenkowski, from the northwest side of this city. The president is going to say that he and Dan Rostenkowski are going to push the tax fairness program, as Mr. Reagan calls it, through the Congress this year. In fact, according to the prepared text, Mr. Reagan says of his opponents, if they think things have gotten hot so far, Ron and Rosti have got news for them. You ain't seen nothing yet. So during this speech, not only will the president be talking about the tax fairness program, he's going to be talking about one of Chicago's best known Democrats, the very powerful congressman who was chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, Dan Rostenkowski. You see here, Governor James Thompson with the remarks he'll be making uh, just prior to the introduction of President Reagan. Let me remind you again that the meeting with the hostage families inside Bloom High School was private at the request of the White House, and we also understand that those who met with President Reagan have been asked by the White House not to speak with the press. We don't know yet whether any of them will or whether they will go along with White House wishes. We do know that during the meeting with community leaders inside, Mr. Reagan did make some remarks about the hostage incident. He said nobody can afford to pay off terrorists. He said he would not speculate about whether there's any progress, but as we also said, very important note in this hostage story today from the Israeli embassy. A spokesman says, quote, the negotiations are at, very, are at a very delicate point. We prefer to refrain from any comment. One other item from the Middle East today, at the home of Shiite leader, leader Nabi Berry in Lebanon, there was a breakfast for at least two of the Illinois area hostages, Father James McLaughlin and Simon Grossmayer. Now, Simon Grossmayer, you may recall, is the man who's had a portion of a lung or one lung removed in a surgical procedure, and there was speculation that he might be the next hostage to be released. They were seen at breakfast at Nabi Berry's house today. So far, no release. Now the remarks of President Reagan from Bloom High School in Chicago Heights. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Jim Thompson and Mayor Panici. It's great to be here with your senior Senator Alan Dixon, with three of Illinois' finest representatives, your own George O'Brien, John Grotberg, Phil Crane, State Senator DeAngelis. I came to talk about tax fairness and simplification but first, I want to say a few words about a subject that I know is on all our minds. The outrage of international terrorism. When terrorism strikes, civilization itself is under attack. No nation is immune. There's no safety in silence or neutrality. If we permit terrorism to succeed anywhere, it will spread like a cancer eating away at civilized societies and sowing fear and chaos everywhere. This barbarism is abhorrent, and all of those who support it, encourage it, and profit from it are abhorrent. They are barbarians. In a different age, the civilized world faced the bloody scourge of piracy, it was a long fight against a great but diffuse evil, but it was won in the end because civilized nations refused to succumb and missed no opportunity to stamp it out. The United States can be proud of the role that it played in that struggle, a role our Marines still sing about in the Marine Anthem. In our time, it's terrorism that must be overcome. 
We cannot accept these repeated and vicious attacks against our nation and its citizens. Terrorists and those who support them must and will be held to account. But now, on to a happier and brighter subject, one that is very close to your families and America's future. That's our plan to completely overhaul our tax system. We're going to jump the present code with its loopholes and shelters and special interest provisions and replace it with a fairer, simpler plan. And the President of the United States. Many came four hours early just to get a good spot. Yeah, I've been here 37 years. This is the first time the President came over here. How long have you been waiting? 8.30. Is it worth it so far? Yeah. Everyone entering the area had to pass through a security check. Even babies and baby carriages were checked. The inconveniences of a democracy in a violent age. If there was a theme, it was surely ethnic. It was carried out in signs of welcome. In food that varied from large's ribs to egg rolls, pizza, and polar sausage. The music, polkas, and dancing. Local school bands, Bloom High School, of course and the National Championship Band from nearby Marion Catlin. The crowd seemed to enjoy it all, waving flags and cheering, at least for a time, but even waiting for a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to see the President gets tiresome. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. It really wasn't what the president had to say that brought most people out, just the fact that he was there in their community. My husband teaches here, my daughter graduated here, I'm an alumni, an alumnus of Bloom, and uh, I'm for Reagan. I'm very proud that he came to our city. It was, it was, it was great. Why was it great? Because not very many kids get to see their president. The president's public visit to Chicago Heights lasted just about 20 minutes. And most of the people are leaving as quickly as the president. But for most of them, it will be a day they'll never forget. In Chicago Heights, Jim Gibbons, Channel 7 Eyewitness News.